Hi there, my name is Mike and I'm a Senior Education Consultant here at the Props as well as an acad academic tutor specialising in mathematics, computer science and physics primarily. Um, but in today's video I'm going to be looking specifically at UCL's STAT or the STAT, uh, specifically the test that is taken by computer science applicants going in for a bachelor's or master's degree. Funnily enough, this is also um, a test that is independently run by ASA, the Australian Council for Educational Research, um, for the majority of their universities too. Um, but it is a very, very interesting test that has to be taken by all people going into computer science at UCL. To clarify, doesn't include philosophy and computer science as the BSc. Um, but it's really, really important that we can't go into a test like this blindly, as with any admissions tests. So we're very, very happy to be able to offer a little bit of support for this today. But if you like what you hear and see in this video, don't forget to like and subscribe um, and you will get to hear even more information on this. <laughs> in the meantime, here are my top five tips on how to do well on this test. So my first top tip uh, for this test is make sure you develop both your quantitative and qualitative aptitude. Um, the test that you'll be taking is going to be a multiple choice test equally split between mathematics questions and sort of maybe more reading comprehensive slash logic based questions uh, in particular. And you might be asking, well, why do I have that basically as a computer scientist? Well, uh, on the very basic level, it's testing your level of English, <laughs> um, especially if you're an international student and given the courses run in English is a very important factor. But also, given the amount of partnerships that computer science has with multiple different industries, it's really important that we know how to communicate, we know how to work well as a team, and we know how people tick. So it's very, very handy uh, if perhaps you're already doing, well, it might be easy for you if you're already doing an A-level uh, in a humanities-based subject. But if you're not, um, maybe try to get into a little bit of reading just on a regular basis on the quantitative or qualitative side of things. When I was studying for my A-levels, actually, I tried to strive to have a mixture of both quantitative and qualitative A-levels, leading to a total of six A-levels at the time, um, which might be a lot for you know, some people, but it was very fun for me. As a mathematician, I understood it was very important to be able to communicate, and there was no better way to be able to do that than actually get out of my comfort zone, start reading a book maybe on Paradise Lost and uh, sort of Frankenstein, <laughs> which was a while ago. Great books if you want to read them. But it's very, very handy to do because, you know, in a test like this, you have to read quickly, you have to act quickly. Um, I would say with that aspect of things, you know, given that it is multiple choice, if you are running a little bit short on time at the end, you can actually decide just randomly you know, put in an answer somewhere. You can randomly choose an answer if you're really, really not sure. But it's better that you do. And I think for a lot of these questions, they do require some deep thinking. So if you really want to make sure you do well in these tests, you are yes, practice the maths, but also practice your ability to read as well. <laughs> now, a very natural next point to move on to, given that we just talked about the types of questions that can appear on that test, is actually really, really know that test structure. Uh, there are 80 questions on that test. Um, all the questions take about the same amount of time to do, and the f like one half is on those qualitative questions, on that reading comprehension, on that test of logic, and the other half is really to do with sort of mathematical aptitude and mathematical ability. You only really get a feel of how well you do with that kind of test if you practice that under time conditions. Um, and that really, as well, cements your understanding of what the test is and what they're really, really looking for. The earlier you can do this, the better. Um, and I would say even attempting like past paper questions on this at an early stage, even if you're not fully read on this, will give you a really good exposure to what the test is about and how that's structured. Um, if you are really struggling to sort of get that down, the more practice, the better. Um, and actually, in terms of finding past papers for these, uh, ASA actually have on their website quite a few different past papers as well as sample questions as well. Should you want to get the extra practice. And my third tip, and this is more on the quantitative side because we focus a lot on the qualitative, is in preparation for that mathematics, um, make sure that not only are you really, really strong with your A-levels or your IB in terms of your understanding of maths there, 
but also take a look at maybe some uh, UK math challenge questions as well to get into the habit of working with questions that don't necessarily have a lot to them, that are given in terms of multiple choice, where you have to think about questions carefully. It tends to be that actually if you look at maybe like the last five questions of those competition papers, you're doing really, really well. It's not necessarily exclusive to the UK either in terms of this practice. You could also have a look at the American Math Challenge papers that are also on offer. But if you could do these well, you know that you should be able to pass through the quantitative questions on the uh, STAT with a breeze. Um, so that's not going to be an issue for you. It's nice for you to be, have one less thing to worry about. You end up being calm for it. And then when it comes to maybe those tougher questions, if perhaps humanities isn't your area of expertise going into things, it might well be, but hypothetically, I can't judge, <laughs> then you've got a clearer mind to be able to tackle things. Um, and when we're looking at exam performance, especially in tests like these, it's not just down to what you know, it's how you can handle difficult questions, how you can mentally manage them, that really affects your performance on the day. Now, my fourth tip is a really, really simple one. Um, make sure, as it is an online test, that you have all of your equipment set up and sorted, your Wi-Fi is all good, and um, everything is okay in terms of running the test itself. Hopefully, you'll be in a position where your school will be doing this for you, but if not, it will be down to you to have to find a way to pay the fee to be able to take uh, this kind of a test. Um, but you would only really know, you know whether you need to if your initial application to UCL goes well in the first place. Um, so, I mean, this test is something that's usually taken in February. I wouldn't really be booking a test like this in September or October if I don't already know that UCL are liking what they're already seeing from my application. So don't be in a rush to book a test if you have to book one individually. I would heavily recommend you sort of keep your school informed. They should really be able to help you set up an environment where you can take this test properly um, and securely. But um, if in doubt, if you have to do it on your own, I would recommend maybe looking at assessment centers or test centers after you've applied really for UCL just to be able to keep your options open. And my final top tip, and I can't really think of a tip that's better than this, is work closely with a staff expert. Work with somebody who has perhaps either already done this test and has already done very well and has gone to UCL and has um, sort of passed their computer science degree, gone on to do amazing things, um, or somebody that has worked on other admission tests and has become an expert in that. But you really want to be able to work with somebody that is confident in both the quantitative and the qualitative aspects of this paper. Um, so if you're really trying to find like the right tutor for that, don't be afraid to ask them a few questions about what they know and what they don't. You might perhaps want two tutors to be able to get this to work. Maybe one for the maths and one for the sort of the humanities aspect of this. Uh, it's entirely down to your learning style and what you do, but there's nothing better than really, really close one-on-one -on -one sort of consultation of one-on-one -on -one work in terms of really sort of maximizing your chances of actually acing a test like this. Um, so if you're interested in actually having a tutor, we have several qualified uh, professional or industry experts here that will be more than happy to help you pass an admissions test like this, including myself. Um, if you do like what you see and like what you hear, please again give this a like and subscribe, maybe share it to a friend who is also actually hoping to go into computer science at UCL or even a university, you know, in Australia <laughs> for a degree, because it used to be quite common over there. Um, but if you have any additional tips that we haven't already talked about uh, in this video, feel free to say so in the comments section. How else, you know, can you do well in this test? We'd love to be able to hear from you. Um, other than that, if you want to work with any of us and you don't know where to find us, well, you can find us on screen right now. Um, so if you follow that information, we'll be more than happy to get back to you, uh, pair you up with someone who absolutely knows this test inside and out, and really maximise your chance of success in getting into UCL for computer science. Um, but if we don't hear from you, best of luck with your application, best of luck with your test preparation, and we hope to hear from you soon. <laughs> Take care.